Hello everyone, Isaac Sigunor here from Optimal Training Group. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create charts in Power Apps. Now, the charts in Power Apps, I believe it still needs a lot of some work. We're getting there. Um, I think, I'm sure in the future it's going to improve a whole lot. You can't really make it dynamic. You have to kind of refresh your charts for the data to, for you to see your data. Um, I would like for it to just change dynamically when an item is added to a list or to your data source. So let me show you how this works. So if I come here to my list, I have this list that I just made up. Um, if I come in here and let's say I add a new item, if I come in here and I say West, um, let's see me add North, let me add uh, let me add north. You can also make that a drop down, but I just chose not to. And I can say north again. So now when I come to my power apps and let's see, I click refresh. As you can see, the corresponding the regions change in the charts. So that's what I'm going to be showing you um, how I did that. It's going to be a short video. So the first thing you need to know um, is that, let me come to this here. So the first thing you need to know is that in order for you, so when you, to add a chart, if you go to insert, you come down to charts. And as you see, you only have column chart, line chart, pie chart. You also have this power BI tile and that's, we can do that in a different video. So if you choose a chart to add, you have this. Now I want you to notice, see the items in here. Um, it has a default um, data. And if you open it up, you see it's in the form of a table. And so the data type is a table. So I want to show you something really quick. It says here, you can use a table function. You can probably use a collection but I think the table function is probably the easiest. Um, it says the table function creates a table from argument list of records. Um, and then it shows you how to do it. So you can, you can use that. Um, oops, you can, um, you use a table function. So also when you create your charts in power apps, um, you have to make sure that it's in this criteria. And that's why we're using the table function. It says each, it says the data that you should, the data that you import should be structured based on these criteria. Each series should be in the first row like this. So there's a series, right? Basically an item. And then the label should be in a leftmost column. So that's how power apps, the charts in power apps will read your data and to be able to, you know, pick up the, you know, what belongs to which label. So with that said, um, I'm just going to show you what I've done. So you have, I have this table and then you have your columns and then your columns will have your value. So what I'm doing here for the value and is just count rows. For, let me start inward and go out. So I'm basically filtering my sales list, which is my SharePoint list, where title is equal to West. And I'm calling that column um, West. So that's my, this is basically my label. So this is my label and then my data. So I'm doing that for each of the different regions. So I'm just basically filtering and then just counting what I have. Um, so if I, if I copy this, copy and as you can see this is my data so once you do that you just come down to you just go to your list i mean to your chart and you move this out the way and then you just double click it so you can get the extra chart go to the items and then just paste and that's how you do that and then you can kind of you know play around with this stuff item gap i can put like a 10 Um, so you can play around with the different attributes to get it looking the way that you want. 
but that's basically all I did for this. It took me a while. I had to go online and find some information about it. Um, and then I just have my refresh button. So all of this is just this function on the on select property. So refresh sales. And then once you click refresh, whatever changes have been made, it'll just refresh and update your chart. So let me do that again really quick. If I just come in here and I say north, let's add another north in here. Say north. And then if I come here, run it, refresh. And as you can see, it went up to nine. Now, I put the, these are just labels that I've added into the circle. So I just added a label and in my label, I just added the rows, the, the count. Now this probably isn't the most, I guess, efficient way, but that's the way that I had to get it to, to work. Now it's, it has all of these different warnings saying it's a, a delegation. So, um, basically as you can see delegation warning because it's it won't it will act it may not act the best if you have a lot of data so the highlighted part of this formula might not work correctly on large data sets the count rules operation is not supported by this connector so um you just be careful large data sets it, it may not work there pro there's probably another way and i'm going to look into that and if i find how to um get rid of that warning without using count rows, I'll create another video, but this is what I've gotten so far. If, if you guys find a better way, please let me know. But, um, thanks for watching. Please like the video, please share. And I, I want to thank all those who are already supporting me and watching and I appreciate you. Thanks. Bye.